If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, <laughs> for the first 54 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We start out by talking about the documentary on Herbalife, mm. betting on zero. I had no idea. Such a great company. They were that big of a company. Yeah, zero I knew they idea. were. I knew they were big. I didn't know they were that. Big. They are Massive. hustling yeah. behemoth hustlers. I didn't. But I didn't realize they were in the '80s. How crazy is that? Yeah. That when we were in 15 years ago, I don't remember it. over 30 years. This company's been around for a yeah. very long yeah. time. Yeah, I didn't know they were kicking ass. That yeah, much. that put us on a multi-level marketing rant. Yeah. Then we talked about regulation and the fitness industry. We talked about Tesla's closed system, 3D printed guns. That's going to be kind of crazy. That's Yay. happening right now. The changes in the way we consume uh, and our favorite Life Aid drinks. I like uh, I like Party Aid and Life Aid. I think Adam likes Life Aid and Fit Aid. Mm, I like to promote my life with Life Aid. And Justin likes them all. If yeah, you text I drink all of them. Mind Pump to 474747. Okay, so text Mind Pump 474747. You can claim two cans of any of the drinks from the Life Aid family for 99 cents. What? Safeway does it two for five dollars. What a rip off. Yeah, this is a great deal. Uh, then we talk about the most commonly Move over, Dr. Becker. Most yeah. commonly used Organifi products that we like to use. I like to use the green juice quite a bit. Adam is using a lot of the protein. Justin is using the probiotics. If you go to organifi.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump, you're gonna get a massive 20% off. And then we talk about Justin's hungry dog. He's yeah. learned a few things from his master. I don't know what he's up to these days. Then we get into the questions. Driving the first question was, this person is a truck driver, drives the night shift four nights a week. What are some easy meals and snacks to take on the road uh, that are healthy? And also, what kind of movements can he do to prevent the pain he's feeling in his neck and back? We did talk a lot about math performance in that part of this episode, Mass Performance, 50% off. Use the code GREEN50. That's GREEN50 for half off at mindpumpmedia.com. The next question was, would using machines for heavy ab work be effective for working your abs? We talk all about building the abs and getting a six-pack in this part of the episode. The next question was, you know, we mess with Justin a lot on how he's addicted to cheese. Not money, actual cheese. He just eats a lot of it. Uh, is cheese healthy? Can it ever be healthy, especially if it's raw, uh, unpasteurized, grass-fed? Say it so. It actually can be quite healthy for a lot of people, so find out how in this part, that part of this episode. And the last question, a very important question. This is one that has been plaguing fitness professionals for decades. Mm. How do I stop hitting my ball sack when I do barbell shrugs. <laughs> this good, is a problem. Such a good question. Such a good yeah. question. Such a good yeah. question. Also, I've mentioned it a couple times. MAPS performance is half off. It is our functional training program. If you're bored with the traditional bodybuilding type stuff, if you want to build functional athletic performance, if you want to build muscle, you want to move better, you want to jump higher, you want to move faster. You want to impress that coach. If you like to have fun when you work out and do different things, that's mass performance. It's half off. We took the total price, cut it in half. Got to use the code GREEN50. That's G-R-E-E-N-5-0. You'll get 50% off at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, we have bundles. This is where we take multiple mass programs. We put them together and discount them as much as 30% off. For example, our most popular bundle is our super bundle. This is a year of exercise programming. In other words, you can enroll in the Super Bundle, start working out today, and for a full year, you have all your workouts planned out for you. It walks it's you through glorious. our most important MAPS programs the entire year. So you go from MAPS Anabolic to MAPS Performance to MAPS Aesthetic. You've got MAPS Anywhere. You've got MAPS Prime in there. Uh, that's the most popular bundle. You can find that bundle and the other bundles and the 50% off MAPS Performance with the code GREEN50 at mindpumpmedia.com. Contractors, and uh, he's one of them. And uh, so, what he do, what does he do for us, Doug? He helps us with our site, our website, and yeah, just building out pages. And I'm sure, yeah, like he does some of the back end work. He did the original work on most of our stuff at the beginning. Yeah, he was the original editor on their YouTube, right when we first started. Yeah, no, oh, okay. uh, no, no, no should... not him. He wasn't the editor mm -hmm. on YouTube. Oh, all the website he's got stuff. A Ukrainian so guy all the that. exercise videos. 
Nothing to do with the exercise video. Well, then the what the fuck website, did he do, Doug? The actual website? <laughs> we, well, we utilized Kajabi. So when we first started, we were on WordPress. Okay. And he helped me with that. And okay. we moved our, over to the old Kajabi platform. Then we moved on over to the new but Kajabi for platform. For the listeners, what do, you, what, what do you think, where we're at now, where we've grown to, knowing how we started, what is your thoughts on Kajabi and WordPress? And, and if you could go back and do everything all over again, would you have built it on that platform? WordPress was a good place to start, but there was a lot of bugs. But and now, is that because it's it's pretty easy to like plug and play? Yes, it's easy. There's a lot of plugins you can use, and um, it's cheap, very cheap to get started. Mm. Mm. So when we got started, we had everything we needed, but then we started to face this challenge, which was we're getting all these different types of uh, malware and things like that. Oh, I remember it. that. And so people will go to our site and then they get porn. That really didn't that work. Was, that actually happened. That actually Whoa. happened, yeah. That was before Mind Pump. That was before we started Mind Pump, wasn't it, Doug? Well, that, and was that was the, that was the Word- Maps Anabolic site. That was WordPress, right? That was WordPress. Now, there's other platforms now you can <clears throat> get on that has uh, security built into it. So you can do WordPress without these type of issues. Mm-hmm. But we wanted to upgrade what we were doing. So we moved over to Kajabi. And then... Kajabi was just basically a, a back-end site for hosting our programs, which mm-hmm. was Maps Anabolic and Nobia Six Pack at the time. Mm-hmm. And then Kajabi, you know, expanded their offering. They came out with what's called New Kajabi, and that's the platform we're on now. Yeah, it's a good platform. There's a lot of things I like about it, but there's some functionality that's missing as well. I'm sure everybody who's been on our sites and used our programs knows that there's some things that we could improve on. Right. For example. Say you want to purchase multiple things at once off of our website. You want to put it all in a cart and then purchase all at once. It doesn't allow you to do that. So that's a, a major flaw of it. Right, right. But they know about it and they're, they're working on well, it. Well, l- looking back now, like, in, in, you know, I know we have a lot of people that listen to the show that are now getting into podcasting or have e-commerce business, businesses. What do you think about it as a whole? And if you could go back and do it again, would you still do Kajabi? Knowing what we are dealing with with Casey right now, too. Yeah, it's hard to say because a lot of it was financially motivated initially. We mm-hmm. had to have a platform that was affordable. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's better platforms in a lot of ways out there, like HubSpot could probably be a platform we could use, but it's far more expensive. So now that we're growing and we have more resources, you know, soon we'll be looking at other options. Mm-hmm. But yeah. for somebody starting out, I think that was probably a very good way to start that's what i'm wondering so mm-hmm. would hubspot be kind of an overkill for the average person probably getting started yeah. somebody you- getting started i think the first thing anybody who's getting started needs to do is prove their concept mm-hmm. you got to get some profitability mm-hmm. otherwise you can throw a lot of money at a business mm-hmm. which you know reminds me of what you guys were just this, listening to it's almost like shopify would be the way i would suggest like really getting started if you're going to do e-commerce at well all. if you're doing e-commerce Super easy the challenge we had with something like Shopify is we have a digital product. membership Yeah, we have membership sites. sites. Totally different. Yeah. And so we needed something that would handle that. And there wasn't really a lot out there made for the you know the average consumer kind of plug and play, just get, get started for a relatively reasonable cost. It's a rapidly evolving uh, market. Rapidly evolving. I mean, being able to have digital products, to have e-commerce you know, people stepping into the market and, and creating their own businesses. Like mm-hmm. this is, we take for granted how new it is. It, it really is a very new kind of thing where you could, like we started with a very, with minimal budget, just a lot of experience. And we created what we've created and you can see the direction we're going. You know, it's, it's what I love most about, uh, about technology. So there's places where you start and there's places where you can evolve to. But what's most important for me when I look at it as a whole is are the barriers low enough to where somebody who has a good idea and a good concept and who's willing to work hard is has less barriers, less barriers to be able to step in and create a business? I feel like you sound like one of those Herbalife chairmen right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy documentary. Selling that. the dream. What's the name of that documentary, by the way? Uh, it was called... Something about zero, zero... Uh... God, what was it? I don't know. I'll look it up right now. I had it on my phone. Just give me a second. But it, it was... Uh, this was a documentary on... So many people had been telling me to 
to watch this so they could hear us comment. And to be honest, okay, I've just never given a shit because I've all, I've known Herbalife was a, a pyramid scheme, MLM. Multi-level marketing. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, right? All the, it's all the same difference, right? I, I, literally, they've been that since, I mean, I didn't know they were, I didn't know they were around since the 80s. They've been around for a long time. They're, a, they're an old and company. So, and so I never had any interest. Betting, betting on, on zero. There betting you go. on zero. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good documentary, though. Yeah. I, I thought they did a really good job of, of sharing both sides. You know, here's the thing, too, because as I'm watching it, you know, I'm definitely empathetic to the people that entered into... And there's a, by the way, they're not the only multi-level marketing business. I've, Are I've, you really empathetic? I'm not so empathetic. Well, well no, I'm empathetic in this in this sense right here. I'm empathetic because it sucks. People are going in. They, you know, they have this dream. They think they're going to do all this great stuff. They're not necessarily being lied to. Although they did get, you know, Herbalife did get, you know, struck down by the FTC, uh, FCT, or well, excuse me, uh, FTC for, you know, deceit, deceitful practices or whatever. You're basically promising these people you're going to make all this money. Yeah. You know, here's the deal. Like, you're you're going to go in into a multi level marketing business, and the only way to make money is to get other people to buy in yeah. on the multi level marketing product. The, the products themselves don't the products really make, don't make any of them money. No, <laughs> most of the sales come <laughs> That's from the hilarious part. It's like you're selling somebody else on a dream to make money, and then that person has to sell everybody else on the dream to make money. That money they're selling the dream is what's funding everybody ahead it's such of you. A, it's such a crap business. But yeah, I have it's so just much, shitty. I have so much respect for the guys that built it oh, and yeah. made it into what it. Hey, no, fucking top paid CEO. He was like ninety American million in two thousand eleven. Fuck. Yeah, ninety That's million dollars. Crazy. Well, it was making extremely... more than the tech giants. Well, it was extremely profitable. This was a what was it? A four point something billion dollar company. Dude. I mean. Gi- it was gigantic. It was massive. Yeah. And the supplements are, I mean, they're garbage. You know, they're not good. They're expensive. And that's not how they were making their money. They they were definitely selling a lot of supplements, but the way they were selling them was, yeah. if I want to be a quote unquote distributor, then I need to buy three or five thousand dollars worth of product, right, or more to try. And then I have all this inventory. And that's how they were selling their product. It wasn't people <laughs> lining up to buy Herbalife supplements because they're so good. Or whatever it was because people were. You're gonna I, make so much more money if you yeah. spend more money. Hey, here's the. <laughs> that, yeah. that was my favorite quote that of the was whole the be- thing. That was the best <laughs> line ever, right there. That was the best line. Uh, hey, here, here's the deal, though. It's not that much different than all the other supplements out there on the market either. No, it, yeah. that you can't. I, you can't fault them for for coming or up any with other a, business for that. Yeah, matter. right. You can't fault them for coming up with a better business plan. Now, yeah. I think you're silly if you're out there trying to do it, but yeah. that's what's beautiful about America. You know what I'm saying? You have this. You have this ability to do that. Now, you know the where I had. I don't. I didn't feel for the victims like you were saying, or I didn't have any empathy for them because it's like here at, at the end of the day, there is a percentage of people that do make millions of dollars doing it. It's yeah. just very small. Yeah, it's just very. It's one percent. It's one yeah, percent of yeah. them are make the president's club mm-hmm. right, and then there's millions of people that try and do it. Well, that's that's your bad. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But it's no different than how the lottery pitches their yes, shit. Exactly the, that, that that line about like you know you you basically bought a lottery ticket that already expired. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's not it's, it's, it's not over. any different than opening any other business. A lot of businesses have a lot of risk, like opening a restaurant. Like, what are your odds of successfully? opening and making a profit on a restaurant. What are the actual odds of that? It's actually very small. That'd be an interesting Google. What are the odds on, on yeah, we should Google that because I know it's a It's difficult. under 20. I know that. It'd be, it'd be probably under 15 or Most 10 Most businesses fail in the first five years. Most right. business, most times people are entrepreneurs, they invest money and they end up coming out and not making, not even making their money back. These are the odds. These are the, the real odds of entrepreneurship. And I think you always need to be honest. If I'm telling somebody yeah. about being an entrepreneur, I'm going to be honest to them every single time and tell them, "Look, yeah. you're not going to be profitable yeah, the for odd, a while. The odds are your the odds look bad. They look like you're going to fail. However, some people succeed. Here are the traits of the people mm-hmm. that tend to succeed. And one of those traits is if they fail, they they pivot, they try something different, and then they go again. Right. So if I stopped at my first business. If I stopped on my first business, I'd be, you know, I'd be sitting here talking about how it, I failed. Well, that's why I like the story of the guy who who did the, you know, went to business school. Mm. He then he then starts up the Herbalife and he has six stores. The clubs. Yeah, the clubs. He the realizes clubs. that they're not profiting uh, at all. 
And so he pivots into the vapor game. You know, <laughs> the yeah. vapor lounges. Yeah, which is, yeah. you know, fucking more power to you, dude. Uh, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, But the irony was Nickelback all lounge. the people that were, were bitching that they got scammed on this I, you know, like that, oh, they lost $3,000. Oh, I lost $8,000. Well, maybe part of the reason why none of your friends bought into your, your pyramid scheme or your MLM was because you didn't look like you fucking worked out and oh, you no. took any, any shakes yourself. Yeah. Like, no, a lot of people you can't sell, you can't sell something that you don't look like you believe you in. Know what, like, you, that's on you. You know what it reminds me of? What? It reminds me of, uh, of, uh, God, what was it? Curves. When curves, you guys remember how curves exploded? Yeah. So yeah. curves was, for the listeners who aren't familiar, curves. In the early 2000s, really took off, and they were they were these these small fitness facilities. They had pneumatic equipment, so it's air pressurized equipment. They would set them up in like a circle, and they were 30 minute circuits, and they advertised towards it were women only, right? And it was for people who felt uncomfortable working out, whatever. Come in, use our circuit, get out. You do three workouts a week or whatever, you know, and and that was the story. And they exploded. They started making a lot of money, and so a lot of people entered into that space who had no business in fitness. They don't care about fitness. They didn't know about exercise. All they saw was, oh, I could invest $30,000, open a facility and make my money back in a few months or whatever. And then I'm going to make money. I'll open another one. So you had all these people that own these curves locations. None of them worked out. None of them knew under, understood exercise or fitness. So you had this explosion of curves location. It was a matter of time before that crumbled, and it's true that they did. They lost a lot of people, lost a lot of money doing it. And it reminds me of that. You know, people going wow. into Herbalife, they didn't care about the supplements or the fitness or the health. They went in there because they were promised that they were going to make. It was all about making money, and then the way we're going to make money is by the way we're going to sell nutrition supplements. Yeah, and this is an old this is an old game, man. It, it doesn't just exist oh, man. in that I, space. I grew, I grew up watching this, man. It's a really it's a really have you guys ever oh, been approached? Am, Amway, it's a, all this. All it's a really it's a really sad story, and and I, it used to trigger me when so, when someone talked to me because of what and it just because I obviously it's my own shit, right? It's my own root, shit rooted to my childhood because I had a stepfather who went from one MLM to the next MLM to the next MLM my entire yeah. life. You know, that's yeah. what my family was trying that. And every time it was, uh, you know, oh, invest 1500 you get the packet, we train you, we show you this, stuff, this, and you can make millions, mm -hmm. you know? And it was one after another. And I remember even when I got older, I moved out and was doing my own thing. You know, my stepfather would, every time he was on to a new one, he would reach out to me, especially as I, you know, got into fitness and health and then he started doing the the bars the drinks Mona the, v. oh he did them all he did them all like literally like you name one like my dad has done this yeah. and i remember being in my early 20s and my dad coming to me with it and i, I it was the first like real hard conversation because before i just kind of let it roll off oh yeah you know, best of luck dad type of deal but then it got to a point where i was like hey listen i don't want I don't want anything to do with these things unless you and I start one because that's the motherfuckers that make all the money. Mm -hmm. Like if you come up with the hustle and you do that, then then there's money to be made in it. But if you're if you're getting in at the bottom of it, like you're just you're just giving some of your money away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've been approached so many times for MLM type businesses, and I think it's because people say, "Oh, you're a good salesperson," or you like to communicate. And so, but what always used to make me mad is they would never say that that's what they were. It was always like, hey, let's hang out. Let me take you out to lunch. Let's yeah, sit yeah. down and, you know, oh, I have this opportunity. It's always an opportunity. And then they would very slowly start to present what they were presenting. And I would always have to say something like, is this MLM? Is this multi-level marketing? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, kind of, but, no, you know. no, 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 no. The response to that is, isn't everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, like, if you're good at, if you're good at, if you've been closed hard enough on MLM, you're like, your response that they teach you to say is like, well, technically, oh, everything's about your boss's boss's boss. Yeah. You work for him. He works for him. He works for him. You make money that in turn makes him make mm -hmm. money. So when you look at all business models, they're all MLMs. So when you you think know, I don't know what their company <laughs> exists that 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 leads with. I'm gonna make you so much money. Yeah. yeah versus yeah. like banking off of the quality of their product. Yeah. Like like what company that that leads with that isn't a fucking shyster. Company? Yeah. You have to be skeptical and you know it reminds me of. Uh, and it's, these aren't MLMs, okay? But it reminds me of the same feeling around MLMs that's happening a lot right now, especially in the in the social media space. Yeah. Masterminds. Oh, you're going to go there. Yep. 
<laughs> of the new MLM. It's it's they're not multi level marketing. Although I wonder if some of them are structured that way. So I do I do question. Probably I wonder the, if some of them probably are the more successful yeah, ones are. <laughs> I, I do question whether or not they're structured yeah. in a, in an MLM fashion. But the the feeling and vibe around them where. You know, you, you create some kind of a social media following and then you create this way to teach others how to do the same thing. And then mm-hmm. then they, you know, and really what they're doing is they're teaching them how to make their own masterminds. This is the this is the formula. So in, in a sense, it's like MLM and where it's like I wrote a book on how to make money and the book I'm writing teaches you how to write a book to make money. Yeah. So like everybody reads that book, then writes their own book on how to make, well, how to make money by writing a book. Well, it's the formula of how they got successful, but that doesn't apply to everybody. No, it's, 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 it's I'm going to teach you how to create your own mastermind. Yeah. And then that person leaves and then they create their own mastermind to teach other people how to make their own mastermind. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that that is a bubble yeah. that is going to fall it's gonna, yeah burst. when you have enough people that are like well, i was a part of all these masterminds and i didn't yeah yeah, yeah i didn't get any, yeah, anything out no. of it most bubbles pop but yeah that's what i would i think for sure that's what's gonna what's gonna happen with the mastermind thing. oh it's it's, it's huge. popular well right now when you think about it you know social media has caused this now that's what it that's what it we is. have this we have this ability to put out our our best foot forward on on these platforms to make people uh, believe that everything is so perfect in my life. I'm so successful. Mm-hmm. I'm driving this badass whip. My, I'm shipping all this stuff out every day. Like that's I it's, always. It's all the same old hustles on a new platform, right? I mean, everything you've seen, like junk emails and shit, like it's the same thirty thing. day challenges. That's been, existed since for fucking ever, dude. The commercials I used to watch late night TV. That's probably a big. I would say that Justin. That's probably a bigger pyramid scheme right now in the fitness space than even yeah. the, the the mastermind is the 30-day challenges. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Everybody yeah, yeah. buys into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One person gets paid out, uh, you know. Or doesn't. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't. It's your sister or yeah, your friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anytime they're selling you, uh, anytime someone's selling you on a product based on how much money they made, like, hey, you know, I got this, look at my, look at this great supplement that's, you know, jug that's on my new Ferrari or how cool I am when this jet and I got this. I always... It, this, the the nah, the it's just gross. Yeah, the slime factor yeah. always makes me go, Ugh, yeah, you know. And I'm maybe some of them are are, are are legit, but I've seen so many of them that aren't. Yeah, but I tune that, them out immediately. Yeah, and it's like, come on, dude. You know, if you've got a good product or whatever, then sell well, me the your reason product. the reason why it's not sustainable is because most people that can be duped by that are just young and still learning. They don't know any better. Like I yeah. think yeah. I think that, and so when that person it's predatory once exactly, and once that person puts that together. They'll never bite into that again. It's yeah. like, oh, you got me. You know what I'm saying? You got my whatever. Or they'll keep biting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, See, some of them keep biting. There are some fools out yeah, there. I mean, I can't this argue. This time it's going to work. I can't argue with that because I watched my stepfather. <laughs> but here's the thing, too. Like When I remember watching him and, and looking back now, you know, I think a lot of it was out of desperation. And that's, you know, like he... That's why it feels predatory. Well, yeah, and, and that's yeah. and that's where you see, like, you know, in these impoverished, you know, communities, it's like, it's sad to see that because it's like they have so much, like, they're 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 hoping for, you right. know, with these these ventures. And, and you're flashing all this shit at them, all these, like, yachts and, like, paid vacations and some guy, like, with diamond, you know, whatever, like, status. And, right. And uh, it's just... It's all a bunch of smoke and mirrors. But I don't, I don't feel bad for those people, like they're victims, because well, they weren't, no. they weren't necessarily. I mean, so I'm sure some of them were lied to, but a lot of them weren't. A lot of them were told, "This is how you make money. Now go make I money." I mean, even if you're lied to, I still, I mean, coming from a family that watched it, it happen to my my stepfather over and over and over. It's like, man, shame on you. Yeah. Shame on you! You know, oh, what to saying? do it over and again. Oh, it yeah. is. It, yeah. do, it does fall back on yeah. the individual. What's that sure. saying? You know, uh, yeah, fool me once, shame, shame on me. You. Yeah, fool me twice. No, 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 shame on you. Fool me twice, yeah. shame on me. You're right. That's but you do want it yeah. out there, like the like the education part of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like here's where it could lead, but most likely yeah. here's where it's gonna lead. Yeah, well, I don't. I don't like fraud. I definitely yeah. think fraud. I, I definitely think if someone rips you off, like legit lies to you, you should be able. That's what the courts exist for. But if they're not really lying to you and they're saying, well, this is how you can make money and you need to buy $5,000 of our products and get other people under it, and then you try it and it doesn't work, mm-hmm. you know, I hate to tell you this, it's a but- a business venture yeah, you, you, at the end of the day. You, you didn't make a good, a good decision. And now, how do you fight that? Do you fight that with laws? No, because they're, necess- they're not lying necessarily to anybody. 
the way you fight them is with good information. Mm. You you go out there and you do look. If you got ripped off and you didn't get lied to, but you got ripped off because you felt like it was a little deceitful and you thought, oh, they kind of showed me that it would be easy and it was a lot harder than I thought and it didn't work. You know what you do? You go out and you tell other people about it and yeah, you make you sure write reviews. That's it. That's <laughs> absolutely that's the power what I of think. the people. You got to right. communicate it. That's right. But a company like Herbalife that reached. Four billion dollars. Obviously, some people were making money. Some people were mm. were, you, were you, making money. You gotta love though, like what they were able to do, right? So their response when all this stuff comes out is like, "Oh, we'll just get the the highest paid or the most famous athletes." Yeah, like yeah. in oh, the oh David world. Beckham. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Ronaldo, you're you're with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Give I him mean, credibility. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's just we. That's why when when people fall into this trap, and I mean, shit, this is part of. This is why I thought that we all thought that Mind Pump uh, would be successful since day one is because there's so much of this within our space. There's a market for the truth. <laughs> there is. crazy. It, it is. is. The That's biggest exactly. scamming hustle like, like environment there is. That's why I don't hate because I'm like, well, because of them, it's also provided an opportunity for us. Yeah. Yeah. Because That's of all true. The, if everybody was super honest. Right. We wouldn't have a business. No. We wouldn't. So I, I don't hate at all on Damn this it, stuff. Adam. It's like, you know, all these shysters out there it, it created an opportunity for guys like ourselves to sure. come in and just... Express it. Now, what's awesome is that we have mediums like this. Now, this would be different, you know, 50, 100 years ago, but, you know, we, there's accessibility to information for everybody for, yep. for free. Yep. And yeah, that's so, all new. Well, yeah. that's why I think the way you fight it is with information, inform people, get people educated so they can make better decisions right. on their own. I don't think the way to change the fitness and health and wellness industry is through laws because, A, Number one, laws are the people who make the laws are have been proven time and time and again to be extremely corruptible mm-hmm. and easily and easy to influence with money. It's well, not at, hard. Well, look at we just saw. We, we were talking while this this documentary was going, and this whole thing. It's not about do the supplements work or not work. Are no. they scamming? It's, it's about two guys, two, yeah, two millionaires, with egos, right? That see an opportunity to fuck a company and short it and make money off of that way, and then the other one to, to reverse it and do yeah. the other direction. Yeah. I like, mean, it, no, I lost in a lawsuit to you like ten years ago, and I'm taking you down now. That's right. Yeah, like, no, that's they what that was about. Literally, are the ones that had all the power and control of the messaging. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? They're the ones that are paying all. All these famous people to say great things they're playing all these politicians mm-hmm. to come out on tv like i mean fuck dude yeah. that's, I, I that's why you don't want regulation that's right. why you don't want mm-hmm. somebody because no, so many, the, the people regulating are the ones that are in their back pocket right and they're oftentimes regulations are designed to protect special interests they're not designed to protect the consumer they they'll sure sell po- it to they, you they, like yeah, they, as i say they position yeah, it that way sell it. that's right it, yeah they position it like we care about they'll you they'll sell it to you and it, look here's a here's a guy good, showing up at church every day with look, these people and so like, get a, the fuck out of here's here, a dude. good example you haven't been in church your whole life before you're on there here, uh. here's a good example here's a great example right so we're seeing right we're now the community right now we're seeing the decimation of <laughs> my family of, are immigrants too yeah, yeah. No, i love that part <laughs> Like, Back in 1700, yeah, yeah. 15 generations yeah. ago. The, uh, right now, what we're witnessing right now are the decimation of certain industries because of the decentralization of power and b- basically because of technology, because it's making things much more efficient. And so you see certain industries that existed primarily because they were protected by laws. They were, they were prevented. There was no competition. Now competition's in and they're losing and they're losing big time. Taxi companies is a fantastic example. Mm. Taxi companies existed primarily in the in the form that they existed. Not because I'm not talking about like people needing rides. I'm talking about the taxi companies themselves in that form existed primarily because there were laws that prevented competition and made it impossible to compete. So you had this archaic system that lasted way longer than it should, and then technology came and, and you know regulators couldn't regulate fast enough, and now you have Uber. And taxi companies are losing tons of money. Now, here's what a here's what, what could happen. The taxi owners, taxi cab company owners are wealthy, billions of dollars, have a lot of money and a lot of power. They're the ones that got the laws passed in the first place to make it impossible to compete against them. So what are they going to do? They're going to go to legislators and they're going to say, hey, my family relies on my job. We're going to lose tens of thousands of jobs in New York City. All these people spent all this money getting these taxi medallions and now Uber's coming in and it's not fair and these people are killing our jobs and you know it, we're immigrants and they're going to paint this picture and they're going to say, plus we've got billions of dollars in votes, 
So we want you to help us out. So here's what the politician's going to do. They're going to turn around and say, hey, it's an Uber unfair competition. Uh, they don't provide, they're going to come up with all these, all these reasons to demonize Uber and to make you think and feel em- empathy for the poor taxi drivers that lose their jobs. Then they'll pass a law that says Uber can't exist or let's subsidize taxi companies to keep them competitive because those poor people have been doing this for generations. Mm-hmm. And this is the game. I talked about this in a couple episodes ago with, uh, with farmers and the subsidies for farmers. And oh, I, I pissed wondering- off a lot of people. <laughs> I know. I was wondering if you're going to go. Oh, wow. I pissed off a lot of people. But the, the bottom line is, look, if you have to tax people to support an industry, that means that that industry is inefficient and that means the market doesn't support it. Now, there's a lot of people in those industries that are paying the price for that. And I'm empathetic to it, but that's also how humans progress. There's a lot of jobs. I, 99% of the jobs that existed 100 years ago or whatever don't exist today because of progress. Those people lost their jobs in essence. We had to progress, right? Today, if you can't read, you're probably not going to get a job. 150 years ago, you could get a job. Mm. Is, that, is, that, is that a bad thing? Well, no. That means everybody kind of has to level up and we have to change the way we approach things. So yeah. what you, my point with all this is oh, we see I don't all- want regulators coming into the fitness industry and regulating because that'll make it way worse. What I want is I want educated consumers to realize their own power. To, to look at things and say, oh, this sucks. You know what I'm going to do? Not buy it. Well, we're on this regulation right. cake. What do you think about the video that I showed you guys, too, with the, the car guru guy, or what's his name? I forgot what his, his YouTube channel was that fixes oh, the Teslas. Oh, Teslas? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. that's interesting. I didn't know that Tesla was doing the same thing, that the same model that Apple did that was so brilliant. Yeah, they're a tech company. Which was, we, we will keep it, what do they call that, like a closed loop? It's like a closed loop business. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, they don't even have dealerships, right? Right. Yeah. That, well, that was part of their which, hustle. Which I don't mind. I think that's a good thing uh, on many different ways. But what they're doing is like if you have a Tesla and something breaks and you want to fix it yourself, they won't They won't sell you the part. You mm-hmm. have to go through them. Right. And you're, and in even order if it's a little grommet, you yeah, know, the, yeah. whatever it is. It is and whatever uh, – and, and Tesla makes a lot of money this way. Um, and for your car – in order for your Tesla car to work, it has to communicate – with Tesla, so in essence, yeah, it's their network or nothing. Yeah, so it's like a it's phone. Like, it's like an app. It's like I said, it's just Apple. Like Apple. Yeah, yeah. that's why yeah, Apple's absolutely. a perfect example of this. And uh, to me, they were the first company that I'm aware of that did something like this and was really successful on on a global level. Like I don't know anybody else that's like said, "Listen, we're going to be we're going to keep our company yeah. in this private, no, no outsourcing." Yeah, private and versus trying to let everybody else in on it. And I mean, quite frankly, I think it's brilliant. And if you got a fucking badass company, people are going to want in the club. Hey, if it's not, if, and if not, then people won't buy into it. But it. obviously, you're buying into it for that's a reason. It. If the market right. supports it, then that means it's working. If it's not, but working, you know that people market. are going to like this, like this YouTube channel. And, and I know some of the people that are watching it, probably even the people that shared it with me, are pushing for the, you know, the 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 ability for government to step in and say, hey, this isn't fair. Mm. They they should be able to. Uh, you should be able to allow to fix. Your Tesla, you should be able to go to any you know mom pa mechanic, and they should have access to all the parts. That to make any, that's silly. That's yeah. absolutely silly. If you don't want that, then don't buy that car. Right. Yeah. Buy a different car. It's weird that they would make that. It's the same thing that we. I look at the if we if we were to start to certify trainers and allow them to sell our programs, I wouldn't want someone selling our programs that doesn't know how to teach our programs. Sure. I would want it kept in that. I would. I wouldn't just say ah, open it up to anybody yeah. and everybody can sure. can push it because then that's how people get hurt. Now, now, how- now that all being said, okay, I, I would like to wish Tesla good luck on trying to to prevent people from oh, hacking yeah. and no. figuring out how to work on like people know how to do that with Apple phones. There's a lot of tech wizards out there. The future is very decentralized, and you're not going to be able to control a right. lot of things. It's it's I mean it's good I mean literally it, it might behoove them to kind of have you know some sort of certifying process with that right like so if there's enough demand there for that but I yeah it right now it doesn't seem like too many this guy's pretty much like a one in a couple million you know like out there like chopping up old Teslas and putting stuff together so. yeah yeah I mean g- good luck with that I mean uh, once 3D printers get really sophisticated. Which we're like probably 10, 15 years away from, Oh, right? didn't you say someone just tried to put a ban on the gun? I'll get there. I'm going to oh, get there in a second. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, we're about 10, 15 years away from really sophisticated, like 3D printer technology where I'm going to be able to print the parts and make my own. I can take a phone or a technology, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll be able to analyze it, print it on myself, if I'm, especially if I'm a smart tech wizard make it myself and give it to my friends and sell it to my friends and say, hey, here's a phone that's exactly like the Samsung whatever or the Apple whatever, 
but I'll charge you, you know, 10 bucks for it. Like, it's you're that's not gonna crazy. patents are gonna be, be meaningless. <laughs> no. Patents are literally gonna Damn, be that's meaningless. That's already happening. Yeah. That, and you know what's funny? You know, I understand why patents exist. Uh, you, I can make an argument that patents <clears throat> encourage the investment big, of capital. Big, well, big, big, and encourages innovation. It big. encourages investments in capital innovation. But on the flip side, it also prevents uh, the democratization of, of technology and all these other things. Right. I think it, the the decentralization of, of of technology and power and all these things. I think it's going to be a good thing. I think it's going to be harder to be a super trillionaire that owns yeah. all the stuff. But it but it's going to be easier to be you know relatively yeah, monetizing wealthy than it is going to look completely different, right? Yeah, I, that's why I think like creativity and design and all that is really going to build up in value because you're going to find your unique people that have mm -hmm. you know different ideas that they could sell the blueprints to. You that's know, right. I can do that kind of angle that's towards right. it. So so 3D printed guns was uh, was about to happen, but a federal judge blocked the release of 3D gun plans which i find <sighs> how do you block that i know dude it's like it's like trying to put the toothpaste back in the tube like yeah it's like imagine if the government was like that's it we're gonna stop illegal file sharing because that's what it is right it's a file you're sharing online like the the, the 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 entertainment industry is powerful and as big and as connected as they are. Yeah, they lost that war. They couldn't stop that. Right. Yeah. How are they going to stop 3D printed guns? Well, they did come in and regulate it, though. I mean, that's how Napster got taken down, right? They mm -hmm. came in and said it's not fair, and then they ended up in, shutting Napster down. Well, what they did, because you could still get free music. You yeah, could still get free was movies. Lime Wire, yeah. and there's all these other oh, if I wanted competing to, companies. If you wanted to right now, you know, and if you had a little bit of knowledge of how to navigate, do you think you could get movies and, and music for free still? Yeah. But why don't you? Because the market outcompeted the black market in, in, for the most part. Right. They made it. They made it better for for reasonably cheap. That's exactly. Why, that's why it was brilliant. That's like mm -hmm. things like Spotify. It's like I could go out and try and rip music from somewhere, but it's like why? Well, it takes effort. I pay nine dollars a month. That's yeah. right. You know, yeah. I pay nine dollars a month, and I get it instantly streamed and to it's me. Clean. I, You're not going to get malware. And all right. Kind of I search. You make it effortless, and and like, of course, we're going to go in that direction. That's right. So it's funny that they're like, we're black. We're gonna we're gonna make it illegal to. You know, to, to to put out the plans for 3D guns, like it's it's, yeah, it's going to be that's silly, tough, man. Yeah, you're not going to be able to regulate that. I didn't realize how many like uh, forum members that we had that actually already have 3D printers and stuff. I didn't know that I, yeah. we we oh, had yeah. that many people that listen to the show that actually have them and have already started using them. Mm -hmm. I thought that, I, I just assumed that they it's were far from the technology is far from like being able to do like all these things you want to well, do. Well, they're but, small now too. Yeah. Imagine when they're like huge and they can like build like massive structures and things. So. Well, it, technically, 3D printers will be able to print uh, complex, um, you know. Oh well, yeah, yeah, houses. We've already well, seen no, that. not just ho houses, but uh, drugs, medicines. Uh, they'll be able to stack molecules on top of each other. They'll be able to print uh, See, I don't tissues. Understand. I don't understand how that's going to work. You would have to have all the things that go into it in order to create a drug like that, right? Then, in order for it to work. No, if you know what the molecular structure looks like, you could technically print it. Now, I, now I'm not from what though. Uh, organic building blocks, you know, yeah. if you have the organic, yeah, you'd have to get the building blocks. That's what I'm so, saying. Yeah, you get the, the, that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah like, but but to create like a, like a opiate, you you there's certain types of mold that have all the the building blocks in them, or you can combine other things. It's not that hard. I mean, put let me put it this way: all the most complex things that you know of in the universe in, in on Earth that we've made as humans all came from the same. I heard, organic there, I heard there's blocks. like a lot of DMT in like almost every plant. D oh a yeah, lot of plants dimethyltryptamine is in every single, almost every living thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a tryptamine based molecule. So it's, it's a matter a, of extracting. Yeah, it. You could, you, if you knew how, you could take it out of a, a you know. Well, won't that become grass. the next big the business or or uh, thing is to be able to extract all these different molecules to provide to these people that have these. Sure, Blueprints like get, get the raw the materials. Right. There's a raw material business, I'm sure, waiting well, to happen. Well, I think uh, the we the wealth of the future is going to look very different than the wealth of today. Wealth of today is like you need lots of money. It's a little bit more exclusive. The wealth of the future is just access to everything for super cheap or, or inexpensive. It's kind of well, it's kind of like now. Like for example, the most the wealthiest person on earth 500 years ago. Okay, so 500 years ago, the, the wealthiest king and queen in the world does not have the access of a, you know, uh, it, somebody at the, in the middle class or lower in America. Like, they didn't have access to the information. They didn't have technology. It didn't exist. Right. So they could have all the, they didn't have medicine that we have. So they, didn't, they could have all the money in the world, but if a particular problem was, you know, positioned in front of them, 
Like if they said, hey, you need to be in this other country in two hours, they couldn't because the things didn't, didn't exist. To get them there. Right. So the future, the wealth of the future is going to be like that. Like, I don't think you're going to need a lot of money in the future to have access to a lot of different things because things are becoming so hmm. inexpensive and democratized and decentralized that in the future, it's not going to mean that much to have, you know what I mean? It's not going to be that big of a deal. It'll be, to, it's going to be interesting because you're- Especially that sharing economy. I, I, yeah. I, I agree with you, and I think we're going to find out as a society that it's not all that's cracked up to be to have everything. That's right. what we're experiencing right now. That's why that episode we did with uh, Bishop Barron, I thought was so, and even Paul Check and some of the other you know spiritual- you know, leaders, if you, if you know, however you want to call them, you know, I think the most intelligent philosophers and spiritual leaders, you know, name the religion, name the the the, the, the practice. They all talk about that. They all talk about how, you know, if it's you a, don't if you don't worship something, you actually well, you, you always end up worshiping something. Yeah, it's an empty cup. And the way it works is, and uh, Jordan Peterson explained it so brilliantly, and it made sense to me finally because I've heard this and I read Carl Jung, what's the book, Undiscovered Self, and he talks about how, like, if you eliminate God, beware of the worship of the state, which he predicted, which is actually what happened in the 20th century with communism and, and, and fascism. And basically the way it works is every decision you make in your life is based on you deciding some, something is better than something else. It's a hierarchy. So, like, you wouldn't be able to get dressed if you didn't decide, if you weren't able to decide something was better. You right, be able this to shirt shirts. is better than that shirt. Yeah, or, right. or should I take a left or a right when I'm driving? Or should I buy this or that? Or should I say this or that, right? We would be stuck and frozen because we wouldn't understand. We didn't have a value system. At the very top of that value system is our ultimate number one value. It has to be. There's a hierarchy. So yeah. there's always something at the very, very top. So whether you 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 believe in a higher power or not, you're always worshiping something. S- something yeah. is driving some right. value is driving your entire life. So what do you say? Were the four power, power, wealth. Uh, 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 honor, honor, p- and pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah. So, and those are the common ones. So, if you don't believe in a higher power, like let's say God, let's say you don't believe in God, and you think, okay, well, that's silly. I'm not going to believe in that. Well, you do believe in something. So maybe it's money. Maybe that's the highest value. Or maybe it's you know how you look, your aesthetics. Or maybe it's pleasure. So you just it's drugs and sex and partying, or maybe whatever. But something is your number one value that drives your entire life. And I think what's happening now, and Bishop Barron said this, Paul Check said this, and some of the other people that we've talked to who I think are also just brilliant in, in philosophy have said this, that, look, we're entering an age where people are getting what they have always thought they wanted. Like, we, right. we're, we have more prosperity. access to it. People have food and shelter. Even, even poor people in Western societies have these things. And we're realizing, like... This is not what I thought I wanted. It's not the end all. Yeah, yeah. and so it's it's creating this kind of crisis, you know. This, so what this. do you what do you think will become value? Because there will always be value somewhere, right? What what will be a value? You know, land, right? Because yeah. we, we continue to grow as far as population. Yeah, scarcity there's still, there is there's definitely still happening. desirable places to live. There's still you know right. We all want to migrate towards mm. you know cool climates, water, things like that. So, but do you think owning it or with this new economy, just be, having access to multiple like locations? Well, the world? you know me, I'm a you, I'm I'm a huge advocate of the VRBO and right. all the yeah. Airbnbs. Like I mean, I just think I mean it's kind of crazy like. I, I've felt this shift. I don't think I've shared this on the show before, but I've even felt this own shift uh, with my own goals and things I want. So I've, as a young kid growing up, not having a lot, I always wanted these things. I wanted this giant house, right? And, you know, as you get bigger and bigger houses and more and more things, you realize the upkeep that's considered with yeah, all that it's stuff. It's not what it's cracked up to be. It's do. not what it's cracked yeah. up to be, but it doesn't mean that I still don't. space. doesn't mean using. that I still, exactly. It doesn't mean I still don't enjoy some of those those things, right? I still enjoy that luxury, but now we live like I mean we've we've stayed in just in the last year with Mind Pump because of how much we travel, you know I mean I spend fifty percent of my time in a multi million dollar home now. Mm-hmm. Think about that. Mm-hmm. Like we're we're tra- we're on the road or we're out. It's not that big of a deal, is it? Right. It's not it, because <laughs> I, I'm already in it. You know what I'm saying? It's like well the other fourteen days I go back to my nice house. You know what I'm saying? Like it's nice. It's easier to clean. It's mm-hmm. not crazy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a couple thousand square feet. It's not ten thousand square feet. Oh no, man. So so if we are moving in this direction where that becomes more and more affordable and more accessible mm-hmm. to people, you're right. It might not be a big deal. But I think just I think land in general, not so much. A big home, just well, the land space. Is, land is limited, mm-hmm. so right. That's what I mean. There, it's you, there's a limit to that. You can mm-hmm. only share so much of that, and then you run out of that. Yeah, space, no, so. I think it's going to be like just like what we're doing with, like you said, with Airbnb and VRBOs, and just lots of sharing of land. Where if you own land, by the way, and you do nothing with it, it doesn't do anything for you. 
So I think it's going to make things are getting easier and easier for you to use that land to share with others, give them access, and now you're able to you know make money off that land or whatever. You're seeing much you know much more of that, and I think that's a I think it's a really really good thing. But you know, for me personally, when I think of wealth, think and, how much and what I can do with wealth. It's 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 not about buying things. It really isn't. It's about yeah. can I use this wealth to. Uh, in, to grow and find more purpose. Travel kind of does that a little bit. Yeah. Does it more for me than buying things? That's for sure. Like you when know, I travel, I, I definitely find more meaning and purpose and growth. Learning things, maybe helping others. I don't know what you know, whatever floats your boat. But I don't think I think it's not. It's definitely not all it's cracked up to be to live in a big, uh, yeah. you know, castle with all like for what? You it's know, it's interesting, dude. Do? With the the rise in all, this economy, you know how you could like go to somebody's house and have them cook you like just like a restaurant. You know, you could couch surf. Yep. Is there a service out there that lets you like camp in their property? I wonder. Oh, that'd be that'd be wouldn't smart. that be interesting? People with a lot of land. Yeah, a lot of land and cool like you uh, know property. I would that not just be pop up a tent. I would It'd be, be interesting surprised. to see what that looks like. Uh, liability wise and stuff, right? If you're right. on somebody's property, because that's normally the, the big thing with the sharing and on land and property and the ability. I mean, if someone's camping and then it's a just, dis- you say you have 100 acres mm-hmm. and you have it's beautiful out there and you allow people to mm-hmm. go camp on your property and then somebody you has. You still have to manage it. Right. Which would, would create, yeah. I love it. Position. I but, love but it. Still, it's just interesting to think about new ways of like utilizing. Uh, you know, some things like that. I love it because it's... it's I know they do that. Actually, they do... You know, they have... What am I talking about? I know they do that. They do that with like... Uh, you can pay... You can like helicopter into a guy's property that has like a thousand or a hundred thousand acres and you can hunt. You can pay yeah, for this that. They've oh, done right. that for a while. ten, fifteen thousand dollars and you can go stay, right. you camp overnight, you go hunt on their property and everything mm-hmm. like that. So yeah, that, that oh, okay. I mean that's a yeah. that's a bigger example no, of the, what you're the, talking about. The most exciting one for me that I thought was, into that. That that I thought was really cool is if you travel like you just mentioned it, Justin, which I love, you could travel to a city and there's apps where you could find regular people who will host dinner yeah. in their homes and you'll eat dinner with like four like authentic yeah, you know. like four other strangers and it's homemade and many of these things they'll say awesome. come over and help me cook I'll have you prep and stuff I teach you huh? yeah so instead of going like if you're if you're traveling instead of going to a restaurant you know cuz restaurants are are uh, they're impersonal mm-hmm. right like you go to a restaurant there's lots of people but really it's just you and the person you're with you don't really talk to Lots of people. Sometimes you do, but it's pretty rare. But if you go to someone's house mm-hmm. and now you're prepping and there's four other people, strangers, and you meet and you all, hey, have a good conversation, could be a great experience in a new city. Yeah, that'd be really but fun. But talk about a frightening thing for restaurants. Yep. Talk about a very scary competition because that could definitely that could definitely be, you know, it could be uh, interesting. Restaurants, hotels, all of them, that's all getting shook up. Oh, right now. hotels are. are panicking yeah. i mean we could rent it doesn't even make sense dude i was looking in scotland ireland like it's like we're, we're literally staying in a hotel once at the end just because it's like oh, okay we're gonna fly out from you know dublin and then we'll stay there you know but like the whole rest of the time it's all airbnb oh if, especially if you have a family as soon as you get beyond two like i katrina and i still stay in a lot of really nice hotels because we just two of you yeah and and not i mean i like the and it, some of these vrbos are getting here too so oh yeah i say that i say that now yeah. but that might change because the things that I really appreciate when just her and I travel and we go stay at these really expensive hotels is I like the the five star treatment, you know. I like the the room service and them coming up mm-hmm. and picking up behind you all the time. Sure. And so I like the red carpet treatment. But shit, some of these VRBOs, now the VRBO is stepping their game up. You know, now they're getting to the point where some of these guys that own 15, 20 houses mm-hmm. and they then they end up saying they have these services. Oh, we'll run the grocery store for you. Oh, you want a chef to come in and cook for you? Oh, we have that too. Like mm-hmm. so I This mean, is a business. It's I w- interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if companies like Hilton or Best Western don't start investing in these kinds of things to, to sure. you know hedge their bets. They would, I think, they'd be very smart to to do so. Although they are such big or companies, they might be arrogant and yeah. think it's going. Well, probably away. a lot, but I wouldn't be surprised if we if we search that. There, there might be some that are already doing that. I mean, mm-hmm. if there's got to be some hotels that are already you know investing. Talk in- about a business opportunity, though. Yeah. Talk about a business opportunity if you're trying to buy properties. Like that's a new way to you, your options before were buy a property speculate on the value of the property or buy a property, try to make some income by the rent being more than the mortgage. That was it, right? There really Mm -hmm. wasn't any other option. Now you have a third option, which is buy a property to be able to rent through Airbnb or VRBO and then do it that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, no. Brilliant. Brilliant. No, no, brilliant. I, yeah. Brilliant new market. Very, very exciting. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to, Justin, I see Justin over there drinking on his life aid and yeah. I wanted to, 
I, you know, people were razzing us about the proprietary blend and how there's not a lot in there, but I was thinking about it today because I was watching all of us. It's probably good that it's not dosed really high or else we, we would go overdose on yeah. the mouth oh, that yeah. everyone's been drinking ever since we had the refrigerator They're in there. They're so good, though. <laughs> I know. It's got turmeric in it. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's the, it's the, come on, dude. I, I don't, I never like to drink sodas or flavorful drinks because they're just not good for you. Right. But let's be honest, it's fun. It's enjoyable to drink something that tastes good, that's cold, that's carbonated. Yeah. So it's a good. Uh, I think that's. What, I think that's what it ends up being for yeah, all of us. Yeah. You know, everyone's. So Which one's your favorite? Uh, you know, I like the the red one and the black one. So Life Aid and Fit Aid, I think really? I like the most. The Party Aid's the third. The my least is the Focus, and that's because of the way the. I'm. I, There's rhodiola in it. Yeah, I swear that some that, people. So here's the deal with rhodiola. It rhodiola. Well with some people. It, it rhodiola me, for most people makes them feel good, but yeah. some people it doesn't. I'm one of those people. I don't Dude, feel good with rhodiola. you said that to me, and you know, I always, I take a lot of the stuff you say like when it comes to supplements, the grain of salt, yeah. because I know you're like a hypochondriac, and yeah. you, you're fucking, <laughs> I feel it. I feel oh my god. Away. Oh my god. And like, oh, oh my god. I, 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 you, I, you, or you you're can't, like a rebellious kid. You have to disagree. Could be that too. Maybe. Maybe it might be that. Maybe a combination of the two of them. No, but you're right because you know I I must have tried it like four or five times, and I each time we were, would be like when we we're podcasting, and I would just feel like oh, like yeah. I had to take a nap afterwards, yeah. Yeah. right? And I'm like, this is so weird that I feel that. So way. rhodiola is for most people a very effective. Uh, it's not a stimulant, but it's got properties kind of like a stimulant. So when you read studies, so I, I have to vouch for it for a second here. When you read studies on rhodiola, rhodiola consistently improves performance in- consistently, and it's different than caffeine. Is it an herb, shroom? What is it? Yeah, it's an herb. Okay, it's an herb. It's been used for thousands of years. <laughs> Just like ginseng, like red panax ginseng or Chinese ginseng will also consistently show improvements in performance. But for a small percentage of people, it it's not, and it makes them kind of feel bad. And now I had a Chinese herbalist tell me once uh, that my chi- my energy, my Chinese energy was wrong for herbs like rhodiola and uh, herbs like uh, red panax. She actually said I had too much yang energy. And just for the, for so you guys know, yang energy is the male energy. Ooh, you got to get rid so, of that early just, in the morning. Yeah. That's yes. what I do. <laughs> so you guys know. But Which Rod- makes sense because I'm really masculine yeah. myself too. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> but, super. Yeah, masculine. but rhodiola is a performance. I, I I recommend it to clients all the time. But there's like a one out of ten people that don't feel good on it. So I'm one of those also. My favorite is uh, the Life Aid one, the red one, and then the Party Aid. Yeah, you do the Party Aid. I one like the, most. the yeah, Party. I see you drinking the Party Aid one the most. Yeah, that one's my absolute favorite. But Doug so. and Justin are drinking on the red one right now. Yeah, I like that one. The black. The only I, one I don't like. The only favorite. one is the Focus. That's mm. the only. Of one. all of I, our, I haven't had the I like Golf all Aid. All of yet. them. I definitely prefer Life Aid though. The that's, Life Aid yeah, one's really good. Of all of our spawn of the sponsors that we work with, what are the most the products that you use most consistently? Well, Organifi. Organifi. Well, yeah, just because I think their product line is so broad in comparison to everyone else yeah. that we do. Because I, the green I'm juice, using, I'm I use the, the green juice. Most. I'm using I'm using the the protein powder a lot now, especially now that I'm back to tracking and making sure my protein's up there. I've been using the turmeric like crazy, and then the probiotic. Anytime I do like a burger and fry or a meal like that, mm-hmm. that I know that might compromise my gut at all, I just yeah. automatically do mm-hmm. that. See now. the the gold juice. I mean, my wife is still using that like before sleep. You know, like is every it really night, helping her? It really helping her out. That's awesome. So, uh, and I was I was drinking it with her before I was going on this crazy diet and everything. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back to that because it did you, you, you did feel a noticeable difference. You know, mm. in your sleep. Yeah, mm-hmm. I use them. The, I use them the most though, for sure. Just but again, I think it's because the, the diversity of it. There's so many. There, if it's not if I'm not taking the turmeric that day, then the next day I'm taking the protein mm-hmm. powder, and mm-hmm. sometimes I'm taking multiple of those things in one day. They have they're such a great product line. Yeah, they do. It's worse. Duh, I forgot to ask you, Justin. Mm. What ended up happening with the dog is everything okay oh yeah yeah so swallowed another ball dude can you believe this like so i get this panicked call from from courtney she's just like okay like like she just was really like to the brass tacks like uh i swallowed a, another ball this time taking him to the vet yeah this is happening again so <laughs> and this time it's a bigger bouncy ball but um since she actually saw him swallow it like rushed him to the, to the vet I guess um, they they were able to have him like throw up instead of like having him ingest it and like have it get caught again. Um, so thankfully it came out. But what also came out four socks. <laughs> what the fuck? 
<laughs> Your dog. <laughs> he, bro, bro, four, he's a dog. savage. I don't four, know. Four socks and a ball. Four socks, like like legit, like big socks. He probably ate my socks. Now the crazy part about that is that typically, so a dog's digestive system works much faster than ours does. So normally they'll pass that way quicker. So that means he. That's just like this morning's diet, bro. Yeah, like he, he just just <laughs> went on a rampage. He yeah, just ate stuff. That's like this morning. He's probably ate four socks and a ball. God, and he's been doing so well from all the training I've been taking him to and all. But like. He has this insatiable appetite. I can't. I don't. I can't put a handle on it. It's what do they say? What's that saying? Uh, dogs are like their owners. What is that? One? <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, man. How many socks did you eat as a kid? I probably ate a lot of paste. I'll probably, tell you it what. It smelled like cheese. That's why. Yeah, I like, yeah. Oh, cheese. I, I did eat a lot of stuff. Yeah, anyway, uh, but I he's shouldn't a, have. But he's okay now, right? Yeah. No, he's good now. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy. How old I know, is he? Because my son was. He was just beside himself because he was playing with the bouncy ball and he just snatched it from him and, oh. and swallowed it. So he just felt super How guilty about it. How devastated was your oh, kid? Oh my dude. god! I felt like my oh my stomach sunk and I was just felt for him because he thought he killed yeah, the dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. I heard you talking to him over the phone. Oh my you god! You did a good job, man. I was uh, that. That's one of those things you just like you don't want to lose it because you just like I felt so bad for him. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That last night we had a, a situation. We're, we're in the we're in the new house, right? And the boys are getting acclimated to the new place, and you and it's crazy. So my my bulldogs are so finicky, dude. Like personality wise, like they just are extra ultra sensitive. They're in a new place. And so they're just, all their shit's heightened. They're just frustrated. You could tell they're scared. They're kind of like following us around everywhere. It's new, you know, like they, they've lost their, their house that they've been in for the last six years or whatever. And so, you know, they've been fighting. They've been fighting a lot since we've been in the new place. They just keep getting on each other's nerves. And it's always mm. Mozzie. Mozzie antagonizes Bentley all the time, which oh, is so really? funny because he's the smaller dog. Right. And in most breeds, like, if you have you have an alpha, sooner or later one dog presents himself as the alpha. He whoops the shit out of the other dogs, and then when he growls or makes the major bark or bite, the rest shut the fuck up. And like, but that doesn't happen in bully breeds. It's really it's really interesting. They I've keep had, testing. They keep testing. They never stop testing each other. And Mozzie is always fucking with Bentley all oh, the time. Bentley must get so frustrated. Oh, and the worst part where I feel bad is that when when Bentley was a well, young, right? And we had Mozzie come as a puppy. So Bentley's two years older. So Bentley was already two and pretty fully, you know, dog's fully grown by two years old. And you got Mozzie who's coming in as the little puppy. I would, I would, I mean, I would just whip on Bentley if he was aggress- too aggressive with Mozzie, you know, like keeping him from like getting, getting, biting him or hurting him because he was a little puppy. And so Bentley's been trained to not hurt his brother, you know, but then his brother gets older into his teenage years and then wants to challenge Bentley and Bentley outweighs him by like 30 pounds. He's a bigger, stronger bulldog without a doubt. And he's got to put up with his little brother always fucking with him. And last night he bit his nose and his blood squirted all over our new walls and shit like that. And oh, no. I'm in the shower. It's happening right in front of me. And I've been trying to teach Katrina and she is getting better. So, you know, when she, when you, it let, you try to let them work it out. Yeah. A little bit. Let them work it out. I mean, they're not going to kill each other. They're brothers. You know what I'm saying? They've been, they grew up together. Like yeah. Yeah, it sounds scary when two bulldogs are going yeah, at it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it does. So I, I, I get it. And she's never had dogs. So I know why she gets kind of scared, but I keep trying to explain to her that dog senses are extremely heightened and they can feel your energy. They can feel you scared and the nervousness and then you screaming, yelling and freaking out. You just can't be like that or else it just heightens the whole situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's gotten better about walking uh, walking away, but she, she gets so mad at me. We have to do something about this. They keep doing this. I'm like, just relax. He's bleeding. He's bleeding. I said, ah, oh, they're dogs. You know what I'm saying? Like, he bit him on his nose, but what happened was they were going at it, and Mozzie bit his nose. Blood goes everywhere, and then you could see. I'm watching it. I'm in the shower, right? I'm there, they're right in front of me, and she gets away, and I'm just watching it, and I'm telling Billy, whoop his ass. You got to get him for that Yeah, one. dude, and Billy's so much stronger, than they're going back and forth for a minute, and then Billy just, like, wraps his two paws around him and submits like pins him down and yeah. doesn't even bite him or hurt him or anything Just like holds that him down. yeah holds him down you know and i was like yeah that's exactly you know he'll do that enough times and mozzie will eventually kind of leave him alone but he had his nose was really dry and it opened up so it looked way worse than it was and i keep trying to tell katrina I'm like little blood like little bites in their mouth like that's for a dog a scratch like yeah, that is that's nothing yeah it's it's not it, you see blood and you freak out and you think it's a big deal but it's like nah they're dogs they're not a big deal and they're best sharp. friends right after yeah exactly yeah. then two minutes later they were licking it's each other in a coral yeah laying yeah. next to each other but dude mozzie's crazy bro you all be trying <laughs> to do that shit him, to man. <laughs> oh man whoop his ass billy <laughs> get him this quaz brought to you by organifi 
For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First question is from B Miller8433. I'm a truck driver driving the night shift four nights a week. What are some easy meals or snacks to take on the road that are healthy? Also, some stretches to keep your neck and back from being stiff. That's a tough Whew, that's, that's a, a tough gig. Horrible job. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I feel for you. Well, I mean it's a tough gig, you no, know. It's you're, tough sitting all the time. You're sitting the entire time. Well, and- the, the positive thing that I I do know about uh truck driving because I know very little about it but the little bit I do know I know that a lot of the big truck stops actually have like microwaves and things like that mm-hmm. at them mm. so if you if you're willing to put the work in where you meal prep and you and that's you, the key right there right and you set your meals out on on the weekend or your day off because obviously you might be driving through the through the weekends I don't know but whatever your days off are is you meal prep and you, you pack them in one of those bags, and I know I know you guys used to make fun of me in the six pack bags and things like that. But here's a, a great example of Bring somebody a cooler. Oh yeah, right. right. That's Bring what those are. Okay, sure, that's what yeah. those are. And they're just and they're separated in meals where you mm-hmm. portion them out. That's they're, they're nice. And then you you know every time you can hit one of those truck truck stops because you don't need to be eating every two hours, especially when you're sitting down. Mm-hmm. Right. So you just need to make every you know six hours or so you stop at a at a stop and you and you heat up one or two of those. I meals. think it would be wise to fast uh, many times, not all day, but you know to give yourself an eating window so that you're not eating throughout your drive because that could really add up. I, I know. Now, here's the thing. I know myself. I don't like driving long distances. One thing that I sometimes will do to keep myself awake is snack while I'm driving. Now, right. I can't imagine doing that for or hours and hours. Energy drinks. Right. Yeah, so I could see the the tendency to want something to snack on because you're driving and you're, you know, whatever, you're doing the same thing over and over again. But I would say, I would caution against snacking for a couple different reasons. One, your- Calories will sneak up on you so vi- fast. Super fast. Yeah. And, and what, what are you going to snack on? Nuts? That, right. You're going to hit 5,000 right. calories of nuts. nuts. Lots of calories of nuts. Really fast. Nuts, beef, jerky, string cheese. All those are good options, but you just got to be careful with that. right? Especially That's- if you're snacking. And then your your, your energy expenditure is so low mm-hmm. because you're sitting for long periods of time that you don't need lots of calories. The, the strategy that I would recommend, I've trained truck drivers before. I actually trained a, a guy for years who- Oh, yeah who owned a, co- a truck driving company. And so for years before he, he kind of grew enough to have other drivers, he was the driver. And we would have these conversations. And, you know, when we would talk about these things, you know, the most important thing you can do, and it's really the same thing that I tell most people today in modern life, because most of us are sedentary all day long, but truck drivers are guaranteed to be sedentary, is choose a form of exercise that's going to speed up your metabolism to offset the lack of activity. Mm-hmm. Because you really can't do anything in the car. It's not like you can get up and walk around like if you're at a desk. You'd have right. to pull over, right. and that's money out of your pocket. That's why good strength training for this guy, dude. For totally. Sure. Like yeah. really, really good strength training. Build a strong metabolism that's fast to offset the lack of activity that you're experiencing most of the time in the truck. Yeah. And then the other thing I would recommend is bring some bands, bands. with you. And Maybe or, even a TRX. Yeah. Bands are great because they're super convenient. And if you have space, like a kettlebell or two. And then what you do is when yeah. you stop to go to the bathroom, do five to 10 minutes of exercises. Who was our, who, which one of our listeners was, uh, posted that in our forum? He had, he had some, he does like some sort of a delivery service with his truck. And he had the bands looped around the back of the truck yeah. when it was pulled down and he was doing trigger sessions. Like, yeah. Perfect. That's I cool. mean, that a perfect world is every, four hours or so stopping at, at a truck stop getting your one to two meals heating them up because you prepared them and hitting a trigger session i mean it, yeah. that would be and then yep. on your off days or dumbbells, on yeah. your off days you're doing some some serious strength training the some heavy like, resistance maps, maps anabolic paired with the trigger sessions and then and then preparing your meals and hitting truck stops. Yeah, and at the end of the day, make sure you're getting the extensions. And so you're mentioning, you know, maybe some neck pain and some protracted, you know, mm-hmm. shoulder issues. Like to combat that, you know, definitely make sure your body's in an extended, fully extended position. Yeah, another. And here's the other option. Like maps on a bulk would be great. You know what else would be great uh, and might even actually be better because I'm trying to think of what, all the prime. No, I'm trying to think of all the issues that would uh, that maps, would happen to screen right now. Yeah, yeah, you know what would happen to a truck driver, which is 
Lack of activity, that's a big one. We want a faster metabolism, that's a big one. Staying in the same plane all the day. The same He's, position. Yeah. Like, you, you're you going to want... That's not, a great point. Yeah, not just correctional exercise like you would find in Prime, but actual mobility workouts, yeah. which you can do with a stick, yeah. which Moving is easy laterally, to bring. laterally, you know, twisting your body. Yeah. Those are going to be very important for yeah, you. Yeah, so imagine this. You're a truck driver. You're driving long distances. What I would do is I would do mobility the mobility workouts when I'm on the road because all they require is a stick and maybe bands or not so it's nothing and then the days where I'm actually have access to a gym mm-hmm. I would do the the foundational workouts of math performance because you're more than just trying to build muscle which it does also it's also promoting good movement patterns to offset the the bad patterns that you're developing with right. truck driving. I, I mean, now that I think about it, well, you mass also, performance is the perfect program. You could also make the case for maps anywhere, too. I mean, it mm-hmm. just this is like this is what's so great about and how we developed all the programs that we did is because there there's a there's a place for all of them in a sense, right? Like I could I definitely agree with you that the the benefits of all the multiplanar movements that we have yeah. inside of performance and that person who's sitting in this the sagittal plane the entire time like absolutely that makes sense even prime pro you know for handling all his dysfunction from sitting in a in a, a seat for mm-hmm. hours upon hours but then also if you're on the road 4 days a week you can't make to a gym doing anywhere you know, and then when in your home days, when you're there, a MAPS anabolic type of program. So the answer is there. Like we have yeah. something for you that will complement like all the issues that you might run into. If you have good planning, super bundle that shit, bro. Yeah. If you have really good planning, <laughs> you're 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 gonna be okay. You, you just have to have good planning. If you go into it and don't plan and just like, okay, I'm just gonna drive, you're setting yourself up for failure. So how do you plan for that? Well, you have a good workout program, like I mm-hmm. said, to offset the lack of activity and to offset the immobility and in, in, in bad recruitment patterns that you're going to develop just from sitting all day long. So you've got that planned out. And then the nutrition, prep your food. Before you go on your trip, get a cooler, grill up all your meat and your chicken, your vegetables, mm-hmm. your starches. Everything will hold well in a cooler. Pack it in the truck. Get yourself and then, some good nitro coffee. Yeah, and eat like I would recommend for a truck driver, honestly, to eat maybe twice a day. Maybe two meals. That's it. Don't go snack and don't eat throughout the whole time uh, because those calories will keep up on you. Just give yourself two good meals to have while you're on the road um, and bring them with you. Otherwise, you're screwed because I'll tell you, like when we travel, we just drove mm-hmm. you know, four hours down to L.A. and back or five hours or whatever. Not that many good options off the side of the road. Right. Let's be honest. And we're all on a hardcore diet right now, too. So yeah. you got to mention that because in the past, sometimes we'd be like, ah, screw it, whatever. We'll just go have a burger. We'll go have something else. But right now, everyone's dialed in. So Yeah, not, a good, not, not good. Now, if you absolutely have to have something to eat um, that's convenient and you don't want to wait and just eat two meals, you know, the obvious ones are, you know, like nuts, nuts beef, and- jerky. Now, these here's the thing. I've trained truck drivers myself and- one of the things that I would recommend is actually weighing out and measuring your nuts because that's where where nuts get crazy. They're heavy. <laughs> I mean, mine get crazy sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, they get away from slip. me. Yeah. Yeah. Away from yes, me. the 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 nuts can get crazy because it's you, you, the calories add up so fast. You grab a handful of peanuts or almonds or pistachios. Like, oh, that's not that much. Yeah. four hundred calories. Yeah, and it, it, exactly. <laughs> so if you're gonna do the the nuts on the drive, then weighing them out before so you at least you know that once you empty that bag you've had your allotted 200 calories or 300 calories worth of nuts and you're done with it otherwise you know 500 to a thousand calories and nuts sneaks up really really yeah, fast yeah, it, a nice hefty scale it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it does it does add up but yeah you you just have to plan yourself out very well he says he drives a night shift four nights a week so you have three days a week so Hey, I tell you what, uh, if you, oh, and mass performance is half off this month. So here you go. Here it is for you specifically. Four <laughs> nights a week, you, you're, you're driving. Those are the days you do the mobility sessions that you can do on the road. The three days a week you're home, there's your foundational workouts right there. I like that. Bring mm-hmm. your food with you um, so that everything's kind of set up and planned out. And I think you'll be fine. Not only will you be fine, you'll probably thrive if you do it all like I'm laying your out. Your joints right. will thank you. If you're a G, get the super bundle though and just keep all of that because yeah. you can oh, use all of it. Yeah. It's a good point, Adam. Next question is from VMA Mr. Black. Would using machines for heavy ab work be the same as some of the exercises in the No BS Six Pack program? Nope, not at all. So here's what they're referring to for people who don't have uh, the the No BS Six Pack uh, program or workout. 
one of the hallmarks of it is, and then there's lots of it's the, the technique of it. Yeah, one of the now there, there's a lot of reasons why it's an effective program, but one of them is that I, you know when I wrote that program, one of the big myths I wanted to dispel was that you needed to do high reps for abs. For some reason, a long time ago, we decided that the abs were a different muscle than the rest of your body, and if you wanted to really sculpt them and shape them and see them, then you do a lot of reps. Um, they're muscle like anything else. And if you want to see your abs, you want to build them. And not only that, but if you build your abs, you'll actually see them at higher body fat percentages. I used to never train my abs properly. I would do high reps or I wouldn't work them out at all. I would get my body fat down to 7%, 8% body fat. And unless I flexed really hard, I still didn't have like the six pack. Now I have this six pack that's visible at 12% body fat, even when I'm relaxed because I've built out my abs. So that's the hallmark of it is being able to use, or one of the hallmarks is being able to use resistance to build the abs. Now, here's why I never recommend machines for ab work. Machines are designed for this average height, average shaped person with a particular type of mobility. When you look at your spine, there's it's, all, it's a bunch of joints and it's very different from person to person. And when you're flexing and contracting the abs, you want to be able to bend and curl at the lumbar spine. The odds that that machine is going to fit your body perfectly are very, very low. And so what's going to end up happening is you're going to add resistance on a machine and you're going to be doing hip flexor exercises. You're going to be bending at the hips all day long. And this is why I'll see uh, – how often do you guys see this? The deconditioned people in the gym use, doing the whole stack on the ab machine. Yeah. You put them on a physio ball, do a proper crunch, and they're shaking at yeah. rep number two. Now, now that being said, I, I do want to play devil's advocate with this because – I know there is a small percentage of people that are listening that can get benefits from using the machines because they have a really good connection to their abs and they can they know how to flex it. The same way that I can get on a machine that wasn't even designed to work a certain muscle and use it to work the muscle that I want sure. to. But we're talking about a very small percentage. So I think what you're saying is 100% true for 90% of the population, oh, yeah. right? So oh, majority yeah. of people, yes, no brainer. Now, if you're somebody who has got in con con incredible control of your abdominals like you can flex your abs in almost any position you can extend them and flex them yes right and you really understand and understand the mechanics of it with your your flexion and extension of the spine well if you understand that really well then yeah absolutely i think you can use a machine and get benefits from it and it you know for one workout or whatever because you can't do that exercise or you just feel like doing something mm -hmm. different i don't think it's going to hurt you but i think that a majority of people, this is an area, and we we did a YouTube, you did a great, uh, you know, YouTube video on this a long time ago, Sal. Uh, that most people just l don't have a good connection to their abs. No. So you add that in with a machine that wasn't designed specifically for their body, and then they try and like hammer away no. on the way. It's like what? you're going to be pulling with your arms, you're going to be mm -hmm. using your hip flexors, you're going to be doing a lot of well, things. Well, emphasizes all the compensations, right? Yeah. He, so so think of it this way: the, the the we all know the abs that kind of flex the body forward, right? They fall, they fall. If, if the average person would say, if I said, "Hey, what am I working?" and I laid down and then sat up. They'd say, oh, your abs, because we know that the abs kind of helps fold the body up. But what a lot of people don't know is that the hip flexors fold the body up as well. Now, they do it from the hips, and the abs do it from the lumbar spine, but they're close to each other. The difference, the distance between the hips and the lumbar spine is, you know, what is that? Inches, right? So it's not that – so it can almost look to the same to somebody who's untrained or to the untrained eye. That, not to mention, if I'm flexing at the hips and using only my hip flexors – my abs still have to stabilize my body. So, and the reason why I'm saying this is a lot of people will be like, but I feel but I my abs. I still feel my abs, yeah. Yeah, I still feel my abs. They're working. isometrically contracting to stabilize it. They're, all they're doing is stabilizing. So it's no different than, it would be no different than me holding my arm out to my side, almost fully just extended. squeezing it. With my palm up with a dumbbell I'm st and, and then moving my shoulder up and down. I'll be lifting the dumbbell up and down. My bicep is going to be active in the sense that it's stabilizing but I'm not working it in its full range of motion. Hmm. This is true with the abs when you're working the hip flexors. And this is why people do like, for example, the, the most common ones, leg raises, right? They'll hang from a, a bar or they'll prop themselves up with their elbows yeah. and they'll just bring their legs up and down. And the hip flexors are bringing the legs up. They're not really working the abs on full range of motion, but they still feel the abs because the abs are stabilizing. Uh, such a terrible yet great exercise at the same time, right? Arguably one of the best exercises that you can do for abs, but also mm. one of the most challenging to do correctly and not let your hip flexors. You have up. to be really strong. You have yes. to have really, really strong abs to 
go from to be, allow your hips to go into a posterior pelvic tilt where you're flexing at the lumbar spine with the resistance of your long heavy legs because it's a long lever. Mm-hmm. That's a hard exercise. Like I I've got when I train my abs they're, they're decently strong. I'm not doing more than 15 really good reps. See, I teach to actually do that with your knees and exaggerate the rolling up of the spine right, right, more right. than anything else because I think it's a Bend better your legs and right. I'm, throw it, your hips up. Yeah, dude, straight leg. It's so that's I, a long lever. Yeah, I can only get like five good reps, dude. Yeah. So yeah. I, I te- and I could actually take the knees, bend the knees, and roll up and exaggerate how high I roll up mm-hmm. yeah. and and, and you practice feel that. a little more contraction, way there. more, yeah. way more. Yeah. So that I think that's a much better way to to teach that movement because that's, that's a very advanced too. movement. If it you, is if you don't have a good connection, it is there. a reverse crunch is one of my favorite exercises to teach people how to activate the abs because so if you're laying flat on your back, what I'll have someone do is I'll lay on a bench, they'll hold on to the back of the bench, tuck their knees, and then they're just going to roll their back, their low back off the bench, like tuck their legs, like they're like they're a piece of paper, right? Yeah. Not shooting them straight up in the air. I've seen people do that. That's the wrong way to do it. Roll back. Just pulling it towards you. Yeah, and, and so you can feel what the abs are doing because it kind of keeps the hip flexors now as stabilizers rather than as the prime movers. And that helps teach people what the abs do. But What's I, that other one called where you just you crunch up like one brick at a time, like you kind of just oh, peel your body up? perfect setup. Perfect setup. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Or just an old, just a old school great. setup. That's an yeah. old yeah. school setup. It's it's phenomenal. Very tough if you're, if you're like really intentful as you do it. Now, something else you want to also keep in mind when training your core and your abs is the core muscles really primarily act as stable. They, they do move, right? They do flex and squeeze and all that stuff. But primarily they're to stabilize your trunk while your arms and legs are moving and stuff like that. So not only do you want to do these these exercises that build the abs, which include which are full range of motion, but it is a good idea. And this is not in the No BS six-pack form because the No BS six-pack was designed to give you visible six-pack. That's why I designed it that way. But if you want a really healthy overall core, you want to do that, but you also want to do uh, anti-rotation exercises, mm. which are excellent My for... Favorite. Yeah, so an anti-rotation exercise would be like... Uh, you know, I have a cable like a cable chop, but my mm-hmm. arms are close to my, my my chest, and then I just maintain good posture and I just stretch my arms out, increase resi- resistance, and bring it back. Right. Just so that my my core gets used to uh, stabilizing with tension, so it's yeah. not moving. Or you lunge in place while resistance is pulling you, you know, uh, to the side. Yeah, very very good at stabilizing the spine. So that's also something that's real important. And then I do want to say one more thing: uh, the obliques. Do not neglect them. Everybody's afraid to work the obliques for some reason because they think they're going to get a bigger waist. The obliques are arguably more important than the abs when it comes to movement and sports and strength. Uh, you do much more rotation than you do like flexing at the spine and stuff like that. So don't neglect the obliques. Plus, they look awesome when they're well-developed. Uh, right. you know, so. Next question is from Ryan Alduenda. You keep dissing Justin on his cheese cravings as if cheese is always unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, you tell him. <laughs> Can you talk about the benefits of raw, pasture-raised, 100% grass-fed cow, goat, and sheep cheese? You know why? You know why we razz Justin? It's because it's a soft spot. Because he's Justin. We love it. Because he's an easy target. Yeah, we just love messing with people. They used to call me Rat Boy back in the day because I ate so much cheese. For reals? Yeah. (laughs) No way. Like junior high. Oh, is this remembered that? Is this a legit thing for like like your whole life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad has the same thing. I got it from him. I swear, dude. He's he's very much of a cheese. Wow, dude. Yeah. He came back from like Wisconsin, brought me like cheese curds, like when I was a kid. Dude, have you ever had cheese curds, Adam? No. Oh my god, they're fantastic. They squeak when you bite them, or they they make it delicious. They're really good. Yeah, they I don't even know squeak. They're, yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's like weird. You crunch on it. It's like, but it's like a squeak. It like kind of like that goes over your teeth, like and, and cleans it or something. It's know. interesting. <laughs> what? I don't know. It's, it's like, interesting. Whoosh. Someone yeah. told me that once, yeah. and I had a client that was from Wisconsin, and she brought me these cheese curds, and she's like, "Oh, they squeak when oh, you bite true. into them." Yeah, it's true. And I thought she was joking, and I eat them, and I was like, "You kind of feel squeak. this like little, yeah, yeah it's really remember weird." Remember the enamel? Yeah. Some, some reason it slides. So here's the reason why we mess with Justin. All joking aside, with cheese is because. He's addicted. That's why. You know, that, and, <laughs> and also, I I admit it. I have a uh, I have a hunch, and I'm not. I don't know if I'm right or not. That he may have an intolerance, a slight intolerance to cheese. That's, See, that's why. what they both speculate. Yeah, that was know, a speculation. We will we will find that out. But I I do. I mean, there's definite value in like say goat cheese. Like where maybe some people aren't as intolerant, you know, towards other types of you know milk and and mm-hmm. products out there that you can choose from. So I mean, I don't. There's definitely nutrients 
uh, that you're getting from milk. I mean, it's not like people. No, it's a great source of protein and fat. Dude, yeah. it's, it's one a of great the... source of protein and fat. If you, if, if you can tolerate it, right? If your stomach can handle it, I think there's a great. Now, what? It, what is it? Why is it not so good for so many people? Then why? Why is it a common cheese? Uh, sorry, milk hasn't been used well, like as a food. Well, no, that's well. So we'll go into that. We'll but, go into that. Yeah, uh, milk hasn't been consumed by humans uh, in on in mass. For a, a super long period of time, in in context of how long you know humans have been around and stuff like that. Now, the areas where humans ha- have been consuming a lot of dairy are northern European countries and some regions of Africa, where it's been a, it's been with us for ten thousand years. Most of the rest of the the planet hasn't been consuming milk for a long period of time. So we didn't evolve yeah, they don't know the necessary awesome enzymes. So in other words, even if you have a problem, Justin, you should not puss out and you should keep eating it in order for the yeah, generation after you to evolve <laughs> yes. and get beyond. No, I, is that, is that I the got theory? The, I got the genetics that passed on. Like you're talking about like Northern European. I'm yeah. like, come on, that, that, that's my wheelhouse. Yeah, Northern European, something like 90% of them uh, produce the lactase enzyme. You're that a Viking, down. bro. There's yeah. no fucking. There's I no. Keep saying. There's no excited. cheese and milk on the boat. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you mean, dude? We <laughs> you're we catching took goats and you know cows from yeah. villages and you know milk them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that happening. <laughs> so 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 here's the deal. When you're when all babies produce uh lac- most babies produce lactase enzymes so they could digest milk. As we get older, our bodies stop producing this enzyme so we can't. We can't have anything with lactose in it. It just destroys us because we don't have the enzyme to break it down. But depending on the region you're from, you continue to produce it. People from northern European areas, I think something like 85 or 90% of them can digest lactose, no problem. People from certain regions of Africa have a different variation in their gene that also has them produce lactase. So it's a different, separate evolution, yeah. evolutionary Didn't advantage. make it to the Mediterranean. No, people yeah. So Medi- people in the Mediterranean, a large percentage of them can have lactase yeah, or lactose. Said. Large percentage of Asians, large percentage of, uh, of Africans outside of those regions, uh, like uh, the Maasai tribe, for example, they subsist into almost entirely on uh, like cow. Yeah. So like milk and blood and meat and all that stuff. So- so that's so so that's number one. You you have to be able to tolerate it first. That's that's number one. Now that being said, raw organic grass fed milk, if you can tolerate it, is actually quite sounds delicious. It's healthy. actually super nutrient yeah. dense. Oh, super yeah. nutrient dense. Super healthy. It's uh you know a long time ago. And here's the problem because we pasteurize all of our milk. Pasteurization actually destroys. The beneficial bacteria that you'll find in milk. So I don't know if you guys knew this. I or think not. Arnold yeah. ruined this uh-huh. for everybody. He yeah. said milk is for babies. Yeah, you got to drink beer. <laughs> milk is for gentle yeah, yeah. Before that, everybody said it was all good, dude. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but if you take raw milk Freaking and you leave it out, it doesn't go sour. It actually turns into buttermilk. I think. Mm. Um, if you take pasteurized milk and you leave it out, it goes sour. So when we actually used to have milk men, right? Like they they would like drop it off in this glass container. That was like pretty like a day or like how many days old was that milk oh that was that was we were still pasteurizing then we uh, still although pasteurizing. Yeah, some people because it was white bro uh, what do you mean like oh, right, real, raw like milk blue? don't look white dude what is it yeah it, tell no, us. it looks almost brown uh uh not uh yes what do you mean almost he's, oh, hold he's, on. we're uh, talking uh, to the bovine yeah, extraction yes. technician no, 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 hold on a second straight I, I'm raw talking, milk i'm talking raw but then they still have to like do something to it you're talking straight from the t- it gets homogenized and pasteurized that's what happens to it but before that and it's when it's Raw and its rawest form, it looks almost brown. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's a very interesting. It's like a, it's like a light, like tan color. And when you shake it in like a jug, it's like thick and creamy and sticks to it. It does not look like milk that you've seen on movies and in TV and in our grocery stores. It's interesting because I remember I was like going through some 4H like display, like so they had like a fair and and somebody was talking about like they get judged on the type of milk that they come in with with from their cow and some of them have they could tell if they like went through a patch of like you know like onions or or whatever like they they could taste like these very distinctive so my kids when they were growing up when they went stop you know when they stopped breastfeeding and we would give them milk I I bought them this is back when you could buy raw milk I'd give them raw milk I don't know if you guys know this but calves they've done studies if you feed them pasteurized milk only they don't thrive the same Mm. Same thing with uh, with uh, other animals. Uh, raw milk they tend to thrive better because raw milk's got the it's got beneficial bacteria in it. You lose a lot of the enzymes when you actually and the enzymes and you know raw milk actually contains some lactase enzyme in it. So for people who may some people can who can't digest pasteurized milk 
have no problem with raw milk. Is it just because of the shelf life that we got away from that? Or is, I mean, there's no. dangers to no, not we drinking had, we, it? There, something happened at one point where we got, everyone got, Long, a lot of people got sick from it. Yeah, decades ago, uh, you know, they were producing milk or trying to produce it in mass, and cows were kept in really cramped, dirty quarters. They were fed, you, you know, bad food. They were fed something, fed something called Brewer's Mash, which was like this, uh, which was like this uh, waste from whiskey producers and stuff, and they would they would feed it to the cows. So the milk actually came out with a blue tint to it, mm. and people would get sick many times because when you milk a sick, infected you know cow they're gonna pass that on it's gonna produce not something that's healthy no you can see it like so when we we used to milk right you have as you 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 put all the you know the suction cups on and then you have this this big glass ball mm. and the milk's shooting through and you're watching it and i was trained to like look at it and you could see and tell if it's off and so if the cow was sick or they got into something like you were saying before the, there's there's it would be a distinct difference now when it gets mixed into a huge pot of of milk it's like you, you can't really tell so it dissipates that, a little bit. right it yeah. dissipates a little bit but if i you see that you take that off the cow right away and then you mark so we used to have this whiteboard right where we were we we're milking all these cows and you're busting these cows through and if one came in and normally you i could tell obviously when i've been doing it for a really long time i could tell by the way the cow walked in they normally didn't yeah. want to eat something they didn't want they to look eat look a little unhealthy yeah they look unhealthy or they just didn't look like they were happy or whatever mm-hmm. and then you go to you go to do their you put the milk and then you see it has some sort of discoloration you un i'd unhook it right away mark the cow's tag up mm-hmm. on there and then the boss comes through later on that day and knows to go check up on that cow and that was like kind of our Interesting. process mm-hmm. yeah so because the the cows were so sick and because uh, they 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 were you know fed this garbage, and people were getting sick from milk. You know, we someone it was a Louis Pasteur had he figured out a way to to pasteurize milk, basically heat it up and kill everything in it. And now everybody could have milk again. And then now we have laws that say you have to have you know you can't sell raw milk in many states. It's illegal. I've seen videos of raids on dairy farms that are selling raw milk, which I think is That's weird. In yeah. absolutely like, insane. Come on. Yeah, I mean, you drink milk from healthy cows, uh, it's healthy. The milk's fine, and it's better for you. Homogenization, there's also some problems with homogenization because that's crushing the fat to the point where it's suspended in the liquid so it doesn't separate. That has its own potential negative health uh, effects that you know a lot of wellness experts will talk about. So, mm. yeah, if you don't have an intolerance to dairy... Dairy can be a very healthy thing. Yeah. Weston A. Price, who, uh, if you go to WestonAPrice.org, great website. He talks about like ancestral diets and, you know, this is how I learned about like cod liver oil and I learned about healthy fats and this, you know, great information. He was a, he was a dentist that traveled the world and studied the teeth of, uh, you know, of, of different, you know, civilizations and found that hunter-gatherers had these amazing teeth and no cavities and whatever, and he looked at their diet, and he was like, oh, it must be their diet. And Anyway, it's, it's a foundation that studies diet and counters a lot of the stuff we, we, we've heard, like mm-hmm. low-fat, grain-heavy diets. You know, they're kind of against that. Mm. But that's where I learned about the benefits of raw, organic, non-homogenized milk versus pasteurized milk. Mm. And like I said, when my kids were, were, were growing up, that's what I bought them. That's what so I gave them. It's basically like it would be it would behoove everybody to at least go through some sort of elimination to see how their body responds as you reintroduce it. It's the most, it's one Lactose, of the most common, uh, it's one of the most common uh, food intolerances. So like for me, for example, I'm intolerant to lactose. So I don't have, I can't digest lactose, but I can take a lactase enzyme, right? So I could take, uh, what's it called? I can't remember, but anyway, you could, I could take a lactase enzyme. Lactaid. Lactaid, thank you. And, but I'm also intolerant to dairy protein. So I must have at some point, and probably through my years of beating my body up, and, and I used to drink literally to gain weight. Well, it makes I most, would drink a gallon of milk. Oh my God. Like I yeah. would literally take that to school with me and I drink a gallon. Of I milk. bought into that milk builds muscle thing when I was a kid too. It's, I drank gallons. It's like, the ultimate the weight gainer shake yeah. right there. In fact, all the weight gainer shakes used to mix them with whole milk because that's how they got all the calories. Yeah. But I would pound whole milk, and I probably had gut inflammation and developed antibodies now against milk protein. So now I can't have milk proteins either, regardless of lactose. So I can't have dairy. A lot of people have issues with dairy. I would say, yeah, I would say more often than not, when I work with people, eliminating dairy 
helps them out. Yeah, and I'm sure all the whey protein for all the gym rats out there has not been beneficial as far as like contributing towards that. Well, then you add in the, the fact that we teach people the anabolic window to slam a shake like right when you're after, most right. And we tell people body beast mode. So the combination of beast mode, slam a drink with Sucralose. Within, yeah, right away. It's like recipe for disaster. And then you, if you're already sensitive, it's like, hello. I mean, that's probably what happened to you. Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because I would pound you already don't have the milk. You already don't have the genes to be somebody who's drinking a lot of dairy. Mm-hmm. And then you add in the fact you're pounding a gallon and you're pounding a drink right after you get done working out. Dude, I mean, it, it really took, is a perfect storm. It took me so long to just accept that I that gluten and dairy were things that I just that just, just weren't good avoid. for me. Do you know how sad that is for a person who grew up in a family that? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm Italian. Right. Pasta, pizza, like all the really yeah. good shit. I can't eat it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Very, very sad. Ooh, pizza. <laughs> you look sexy now, though, so it's worth it. Oh, man. I appreciate it. Mm. <laughs> Next question Ish. is from. Bad casting. How do I stop nudging my sack when doing barbell shrugs? Well, this we have is a, such a common we, problem. We got a nut theme today, huh? Oh, wow. that's, a, that's a legit. It issue. is legit. Even, what, a, this, what a great question, bro. Yeah. What a great because you know you don't. You ever seen Silence of the Lambs? I, oh, I highly suggest you you do that move. Oh, hey, hash, back. Hashtag big dick problems. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> It puts the lotion in the basket. You know what's funny? If you have big legs, especially because you squeeze your big legs together, yeah. Yeah. pushes everything forward. You're gonna, <laughs> pushes yeah, the berries the, forward. The you're back gonna, tuck. You're going to end up blasting yourself. Uh, uh, I would say use a, uh, you know, I change my grip sometimes. So if I go too wide, it's like sits right there. What do you think of behind the back shrug? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Behind the back shrug was a uh, a favorite with uh, Lee Haney, Mr. Mr. Olympia, eight-time Mr. Olympia. You don't use nearly as much weight, but boy, do you uh, feel that well, shit you, in your traps. Yeah, you got to have decent shoulder mobility. I mean, Good pull point. that off. But yeah. yeah, definitely, it's a legit exercise. Yeah, behind, behind the back, shrugs, dumbbells instead. I, that's, this is one of the reasons why I don't like barbell shrugs, because I can I can pull, I can shrug pretty good weight. Not yeah. the only reason you don't like barbell shrugs. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but Weird. This, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but this this is definitely uh, one of the reasons why I would gravitate towards either the, you know, the dumbbells, yeah. the behind Behind, behind the back. You know what's a, a, a great one that we haven't talked about on here, I, or maybe we have a long time ago, is reverse shrugs, where you mm. actually pick the bar above your head and you oh, actually oh, shrug. Oh, overhead shrugs? Yes. Oh, those are gnarly. They are. They hit your traps. Great, great move. You got to, because it's already, oh, wow. so. I forgot about those. Here's the deal. Like, this is, and this is why I love this. This is also why I love the Z press, okay? Not a lot of people lift something in, in full extension above their head and can stabilize weight. Mm-hmm. That in itself is a great trap exercise because right. with the weight suspended like that, you have the long lever and the traps are responsible kind of stabilizing that weight above your head. So, Z presses are already one of my go to moves for that alone because it will help. Build those traps because you have to stabilize it. Now, if you take that and you actually reverse shrug, so you're like reaching up and down with that weight behind your head, that's a great move. I've done great that. forgotten move. I've done it before, and it hits the traps like nothing I've ever. Now you have to have decent shoulder mobility. Yes. If you have shoulder impingement issues, you're probably not gonna. Yeah. It's not for everybody. A little more on the dangerous side. Yeah, but yeah. It's not for everybody, effective. but if you can do that move, you got to go light. Yes, you got to go really light. Yeah. So there's that exercise, and then. I discovered through when we went, you know, a while ago, we Some traveled with Robert, yo, Robert Oberst, right? Boom. And this guy's traps look, it's basically, it looks like he's got like two other humans growing out of his back. He's got like this huge oh, yeah. upper it's back. It's like a mountain. Yeah. And I'm, and, and so Doug's like, what do you do to, you know, to build your traps? And he's like, everything. Snatch grip, uh, <laughs> high poles. Yeah. That's the best exercise ever. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. I guess he's right. So I started doing those. Yeah. Lit my upper back up like nothing. No, you else. had that fast twitch element to it. You had a little power to that muscle group where you, you know, that's so great. Like I remember just even power cleans, you know, which is very, you know, similar type of movement. I remember my traps just exploding. Well, what a great point, Justin, because it's just a, it's a muscle that doesn't get a lot of explosive work anywhere else. It's right. designed. It was well, designed. It's a, it's a stabilizer it's a muscle. Stabilizer. Yeah, yeah. So it really stabilizes the the shoulder girdle, and so that's so we get work in it, and you could directly do it by doing shrug and lifts like that but how often does your body ever call upon it for yeah. an explosive and movement and most people do shrugs wrong dude mm-hmm. most people their shoulders are a little rolled forward they're shrugging up and they're using the other scapula elevators aside from the trapezius muscles which are the big meaty ones you yes. know so when you're doing shrugs what you want to do is when you're when you're doing them is you want to rather than going straight up imagine you're going up and behind your ear a little bit so you're kind of coming up at an angle and squeezing back just a little bit. It's not this huge back squeeze, 
but you're coming up at an angle where you're aiming your shoulder to behind your ear. Watch how your traps feel. If you go heavy, you end up with this forward shoulder shrugging thing, which A, is going to give you bad posture, cause shoulder problems, probably tweak your neck. The the chicken wing move. Yeah. You've seen that? That guy that does that? Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys see the same guy at the Santa Teresa 24 that used to do that? Yes. Yes. (laughs) And like so much weight on the bar. Yes. Yeah. Picks it up maybe like not even an inch, just- (laughs) He wore the weight belt that said beast on it. It just bounces. Yeah. And the hammer strength, one of my- That poor guy. We got to get him in here. (laughs) You've roasted I want to put a face to the name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, We roasted him. I know exactly You're going to put beast yeah. on your I, It wasn't that many, It was a couple of years ago. We had already started Mind Pump, but I had seen him, so he's around. Oh, he's still listening. I saw, I saw him at the uh, Willow Glen 24-Hour Fitness. Oh, wow. Same guy. So, same doing the same, same exercises. Same guy, wearing the same super tight shirts. Yeah, that the, the Hammer Strength Shrug Machine, which I actually enjoy doing shrugs on, also simultaneously happens to be a machine that I hate watching people use because it allows guys with big egos to add a shit ton of weight. So- you know, guys that have never lifted more than, you know, one or two plates on any exercise, all of a sudden can throw yeah. like four or five plates on there and do, you and, know. And slam them down real hard. Yeah, and, and do like a centimeter range of motion and, yeah. and walk around like, yeah. I'm the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I told you guys what I used to do with him, right, when he would walk in? Yeah, beast. Yeah, I'd get on the intercom. And just just, just <laughs> loud beast. enough. It's beast. <laughs> it's loud so everybody knew. The beast there. has arrived. Anyway, uh, this month, MAPS. Performance is 50% off. Hooking it up. Use the code GREEN50. My 50. green people. GREEN50 will give you 50% it's off. It's one word, all one word, and 50 is not written out. It's 5 That's so. right, GREEN50 at mindpumpmedia.com. Also, we have free guides available at mindpumpfree.com. That's all right. Kinds if you're too guides. cheap to buy any of the programs, go try <laughs> all the free shit first. You it's got free. called out. <laughs> Do it. And uh, also, lastly, I'd like to mention our social media platform, uh, on Instagram, you can find me, Mind Pump Sal. You can find Adam, Mind Pump Adam, and Justin, at Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.